walk 30 or 40 feet away and set it down the ground and you know move this around until you get the sun reflection aimed right at the shaded wall that you plan to use for observation oh yeah don't walk in front of the light beam boom 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 in this video, I'm going to show you two cheap ways for projecting an image of the sun safely onto paper. You're probably familiar with the first way, but I bet you've never seen the second method, and it's one of the best for visualizing sunspots. Pinhole cameras, sometimes called camera obscura, have been around for over 2,000 years. These are one of the simplest and most effective ways to project the sun's image onto paper for multiple people to view at the same time. These are great for solar eclipses. Now, as you might imagine, pinhole cameras do more than just visualize the sun. Because they can project images into a dark chamber, they can be used as an actual camera exposing real photographic film or a real camera sensor. There are several modern day photographers who specialize in using pinhole cameras to take photographs. Fun fact, I learned about pinhole cameras by watching the Bloodhound Gang on 321 Contact back in the 1980s. If you remember watching that fantastic science show, please leave a message down below. Almost any cardboard box will do. The longer the better though, because that gives the sunlight more time to grow and expand and project a larger image onto where the paper is going to be. But let's get down to business and build this pinhole camera. For the pinhole, you can use basically any kind of push pin. This works very well. The diameter of the hole should be less than 1% the distance from where it penetrates the wall and where it projects onto your paper. Now, there is a question about whether you should use a membrane or go straight through the cardboard. If your cardboard is very thin, then you can push the hole right through that. So if you're using a cereal box or something like that, but this cardboard is pretty thick. So what we're gonna do is cut a hole out and use aluminum foil. That thin membrane really makes a difference for creating a sharp image of the sun. First, cut a little square hole out of the box. Now we're going to tape the aluminum foil over that hole. And now for the crucial part of just poking the pinhole. Just make one single hole. Try to keep it round. And there we go. One last thing. We have to put our paper projection screen inside. I have some tape on here just to keep it from flying away or falling out. And that's all there is. Let's take it outside and give it a test. And here we have a wonderful projected image of the sun that everyone can safely enjoy. One final fact on pinhole cameras. They occur naturally. Trees produce thousands of them daily with light streaming down through the tiny spaces between leaves. This really shows up during an eclipse where those pinholes project crescent shapes on the ground and the fences. I filmed this during the October 2023 eclipse. This is one of my favorite methods because it's great for showing sunspots. This method uses a tiny little mirror and any shaded wall. Ideally, it would be a shaded wall inside of a, a room, perhaps a shed or a garage or something like that. It works similarly to the pinhole camera, but it results in a brighter image. The downside is that it does require a longer distance of about 40 or 50 feet to do it well. And by the way, I have to thank Rico Tyler for suggesting this idea. Here's a diagram that kind of shows how it works. We've got the sun up here and basically the sun light comes down and it hits this mirror that's roughly about a quarter inch by a quarter inch reflects a very long distance 30 40 50 feet into this dark area perhaps this is a garage or a shed and it hits this wall right here now you're going to end up with a very large image so big that you can usually see sun spots but the concept is very similar to the pinhole camera that basically uh, even though you've got basically a, a square mirror uh, with with enough distance that light actually is projected into a proper image the mirror that I'm using is a first surface mirror. First surface means that the reflective layer is actually on the front of the glass and not the back like you would see in a common household mirror. The main advantage is that the light coming in bounces immediately off the reflective surface. It doesn't have to go through an eighth of an inch of glass before it hits the reflective layer and then bounce back through another eighth of an inch of glass. That would cause some 
refraction and might cause some issues with the light. Uh, you can buy these online. You can get scraps and buy chunks of this on eBay. But a lot of times these come out of old projectors or scientific equipment. A quick way to test whether your mirrors are first surface or not is to take a pencil and just barely touch the mirror. The images should touch if it's a first surface. If it is not a first surface, you'll see a, a gap between the pencil tips. That just means that there's a layer of glass before you touch the reflective layer. Here's another example of the first surface mirror. Uh, and you can see it's, it's pretty thick, but the reflective layer is right on the front. Now, with that said, if you can't get access to any first surface mirrors, these second surface mirrors that you can buy very cheaply at Hobby Lobby or online are a great start. These will give you a very adequate image of the sun, and some of these even come with self-adhesive on the back. Option number one involves a wooden block, a couple of angle brackets, and a little magnet. Let me show you how this goes together. So we have this little wooden block here. I got these little shelf brackets. I think these are inch and a half by inch and a half. I got this at, I believe, Home Depot. You just screw these into a wooden block. The block gives you a nice solid base. Then you have the part where all the magic happens, right? This is another angle bracket. I've used double-sided tape and I put a magnet on it, just a little disc magnet. It doesn't have to be a disc. I've put double-sided tape and put a round mirror on this side and double-sided tape and I've put a first surface mirror on this side and it works incredibly well so you just put it together like this and as you can imagine this lets it point at any angle and you can rotate this and it lets you get really good precise control on angles now top tip these mirrors are actually bigger than you need this one is uh, probably half inch a little bit bigger than that half inch by half inch if you use a mirror this big, it's going to project so much light, you're probably going to need 60 or 70 feet to get a really sharp image of the sun. Uh, I found that basically by placing tape over this and masking it down to about a quarter of an inch, you get a really good sharp picture at about 30, 40 feet, something like that. You have to experiment on your own, see what works best. Of course, if the room or the wall that you're projecting to is in a dark enough shade, you may be able to get away with an even smaller masking. Let me put some tape on this to show you what I mean. I just have some electrical tape. Leave about a quarter of an inch. All right, so that's about a quarter of an inch, a little bit less actually. Uh, that'll give you a pretty good projected image view from about 30 feet or so. Now, I know it seems counterintuitive that a square mirror or a square hole essentially can project a really nice sharp round image of the sun. But as it turns out, um, that is the case because as the various rays of light from the sun are bouncing off this, when they do coalesce on that wall, it gives you a nice sharp image. This will uh, cost you five to 10 bucks in parts. However, the best tool to use is a billiard ball or a cue ball in this case from a pool table. You basically set this into a PVC collar. I got this from Lowe's. I think it was $3 or something like that. And this just sits in there. It gives you a rock solid base and it, you can move this to any angle. So you take your mirror, you put your double sided tape on it, stick it right on that cue ball. You can aim it in any direction you want. Look at that, works really well. Now there's only one problem. Uh, this particular mirror is way too big. In fact, uh, you know, the bigger the mirror, the farther away you gotta get to get a sharp image of the sun. This mirror is so big, you'd probably need to be over a hundred feet away from your shaded wall that you're gonna be projecting onto. So most likely I would basically take uh, a mask of tape, put it on there like that, uh, and that would cut it down to about a quarter inch square and you can aim it. it this works surprisingly well. Uh, again, I got this idea from astronomer Rico Tyler. Uh, what's nice is you can actually put a couple on here. Here's another first surface mirror. It's got some double-sided sticky tape on it, put it right there. And you can do some experiments. You can try reflecting on this mirror, try reflecting on this mirror. Again, uh, my personal findings are that if, if you mask it down to about a quarter of an inch, you'll get a sharp image after about uh, 30, 40 feet. Uh, something this big, you're going to have to go out about 60 feet, maybe even more. And so you can experiment uh, with the mask. If you want, you can try a circular mask, see if that helps. It really won't make much of a difference, but it sure is worth a try. It's a lot of fun. And also, I found out if you put this right there and you lift this up real quick, it says like, 
If you're enjoying this channel, please push the like button. Once you have either of these contraptions built, walk 30 or 40 feet away and set it down on the ground, maybe something stable, perhaps on a, a brick or a, a box or something to get it up off the ground if you have to. And, you know, move this around until you get the sun reflection aimed right at the shaded wall that you plan to use for observation. So right now we're projecting about a four inch diameter sun onto this piece of paper that's on the door. And it's hard to see, but there is actually a sunspot today. I'll try to point it out. It might not show up on camera, but it's pretty good. It's a little windy out, so the image is shaking a little bit. Now, if you use either of these techniques or even the pinhole camera here, please let me know how it goes for you. Leave a comment down in the comment section. Keep in mind that you will be projecting a bright beam of light over a long distance. So make sure that it doesn't cross the eye line of pedestrians or drivers or anything else. Just use common sense and be careful. And if you found this video useful, please push the like button. Thanks for watching and clear skies, everybody.